We're talking about two different trunked radio systems, those that need to be fully programmed into your scanner and those that you can take a shortcut on. Let's figure out the differences and the similarities between each one of these. Hi, my name is Phil Lichtenberger, and I've been in the scanner radio hobby for about four decades, and I'm going to take part of the knowledge and transfer that over to you. In this series, I'm calling Scanner Radio University. When programming up our scanner radios, we have to look at two different kinds of trunked radio systems. Those that require full programming with logical channel numbering, that is LCN, and those that we can get by with doing control channel only mode. And we're gonna break down both of those. Let's start with the ones that are a little bit more difficult to wrap your head around. Those are the ones that require LCN or logical channel numbering. These are trunked radio systems that when you program in each trunked system and site into your scanner, you have to define every single frequency in that site in your scanner. So let's just say there's 10 frequencies. You have got to put one through 10 in the exact order that that trunk system defines those frequencies in into your scanner radio. Now don't worry, a lot of this is already broken down for you in the radio reference database. And if you're going to use computer-aided programming to set up your radio, maybe using software like Sentinel if you have a Home Patrol, or if you have a Whistler scanner, you might be using EasyScan, or maybe you're using Butel software or ProScan, or maybe even FreeScan. A lot of this information can be pulled right out of the radio reference database and into your scanner with this type of software. But if you're old school like me, and sometimes you want to put things in either by keyboard or by spreadsheet, this is very important to note, the logical channel numbering. Not every frequency might be in the order that you expect it to be in, or it might jump over and leave some blanks in the sequence. For example, if we have five frequencies, maybe you have them set up one, two, three, four, five. Great. Or maybe they're set up as one, three, five, seven, and nine. It all depends on how these systems and these sites have defined how these frequencies are in the logical channel numbering. So yes, this is a little bit weird, but again, these are the ways that some trunk systems are set up. Why do we have to know about logical channel numbering when we program up our scanner radios? Because this is the way that the protocol works for some of these trunked radio systems. So let me explain it here. If you've watched previous versions of our Scanner Radio University series, you know how trunked radio systems work. And if you haven't watched those videos yet, I will put a link up in the description of this video and also up here at the top of the screen. So make sure that you check those videos out after you finish watching this one. And to find more videos about the Scanner Radio hobby, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Now in those earlier videos, we talk about how trunk radio systems work and how a control channel tells each user where to go when those talk groups become active. And we describe too how the control channel is like a conductor, right? He's telling everybody where to go. Although sometimes the conductor here gets a little lazy and they're going to take a shortcut. So instead of saying, hey, everybody on this talk group, go to frequency 158.8875, they're going to say, go to channel 10, go to channel 3, go to channel 7. I'm the control channel and I'm on channel 2. It's a shortcut but it also saves a lot of time on some of the overhead messaging, the data stream that is reserved for other bits and bytes of information. And these are how the different protocols work. Now, if the system you're monitoring doesn't have a mapping guide as part of the protocol, it is up to us to tell the scanner radio what frequency belongs to channel five, channel one, channel seven, channel nine, because the system as a whole doesn't have that information as part of the protocol mapping. In other words, it's up to us to tell the scanner radio that channel one is 851.0825. Channel two might be 852.4125. 
and what channel three is, and maybe channel four is blank, and channel five is something different, right? It's very important that we know all this and tell it to our scanner radios so that our scanners know where to go when that message comes over our head that says, hey, talk group one, two, three is on channel five. And talk group four, five, six is on channel 15. And a couple of these systems that we need to program up with LCN are EDAX, LTR, and DMR, just to name a couple. And of course, a lot of the DMR variants, such as Capacity Plus, Capacity Max, need to have these channels set up predefined. Okay, so now we've talked about trunked radio systems that require an LCN, right? Or to be pre-programmed in with the logical channel numbering in our scanner radios. Well, there's another version of this out there where all we have to do is program in control channels. And the protocol actually can figure out by using some simple math what each frequency is in its logical channel numbering rubric. And then there are some things that we need to watch out for, even if we're using control channel only mode. And I have a hint for you and a warning for you at the end of this video. So make sure you stick around for that. Control channel only mode basically means that we have to put the control channel for this site in our scanner radio. And based off of the protocol, we can get the channel mapping for this site we can get a base channel, we get the steps, and the scanner knows the frequency that it's on, so it can do the math to figure out where each channel is based off of that channel spacing and the upper and lower frequencies of that channel mapping. So instead of us pre-programming the scanner saying channel one is here, channel five is there, channel seven is here, the scanner can figure all that out on its own. So what kind of systems can we program into our scanner radio that can operate in control channel only mode? Well, that can be Motorola Type 2. Again, that's not to be confused with P25 Phase 2. Phase 2 and Type 2 are two different animals. So when we look at radio reference, we'll notice that we have some red control channels when we look at a trunked radio system. And in control channel only mode, those are the only frequencies that we have to worry about programming into our scanner radios. And when we program in our scanners using computer-aided software, sometimes we get a prompt that says, hey, do you want to just put in the control channels here? And we can hit yes or no. Now, back in the days where we had scanners with very limited memory numbers, like a 780, 785D, or even like the DMA scanners like the BCD-15 or early Whistler scanners, we only had a certain number of memory channels that we could use. So we had to be very resourceful when it came to what we put into the scanners. And every voice channel and every control channel took up a memory position that we could use for maybe something else. So say you were going to drive I-95 from New England all the way down to Florida, and you were going to try to put in every single trunk radio system that you might have to listen to, plus all the conventional stuff, you could run out of memory very quickly if you were to put in all the conventional, all the control channels, and all of the voice channels. Control channel only mode can really save us some resources here. But with today's newer scanner radios, especially those that can operate off of an SD card, like the Home Patrols databases or the EasyScan database, we can really avoid all that these days and just put everything in all the control channels all the voice channels because really when we're talking about gigabytes of data versus just a couple of like a thousand memory channels it makes a lot more sense to put in just everything that we might possibly need and this ties into that warning i had for you a moment ago but before we get there i want to thank my patreon supporters one of the benefits of being a Patreon supporter is getting a podcast episode early and even our YouTube videos before they come out, depending on the tier that they are on. And of course, bringing this podcast from an audio only to a video platform such as YouTube would not be possible without the support of our Patreon supporters. If you'd like to help support us over on Patreon, please go to scannerschool.com slash Patreon. So at this point now, we've got a lot figured out here, right? We know the difference between an LCN system and a system that has control channel only mode enabled. And the benefits of the control channel only type of systems are that the scanner can figure out all the voice channels on its own. And if the voice channels ever change or are added, 
the scanner figures that one out. Whereas a benefit of an LCN system is we've already told the scanner all of the voice channels and all the control channels. So if a control channel ever has to move over to a voice channel, scanner's already programmed. But if we just did control channel only mode and a control channel goes to a voice channel, we could lose that trunk sight while that control channel is operating on a voice channel if we didn't put in all of the control and voice channels into that site. And let me tell you, that has happened before in the past. We have a system on the east end here of Long Island called the East Hampton P25 trunk radio system. And several years ago, probably even before it became the P25 system was a type 2 system, there was a user that noticed that every few days he would lose that system. And he couldn't figure out why. And then a day later, it would come back like nothing was ever wrong. Well, the way that that system operated was, is that it rolled the control channel fairly regularly. And I think it was pretty much daily, it would roll through that control channel through the list of control, known control channels on Radio Reference. Well, when that Radio Reference database was updated, we had added in one channel as voice only mode. So when you program in your scanner, you see where this is going now, right? With control channel only mode, that voice channel was never programmed into your scanner. And when that voice channel became the control channel, all of a sudden now your scanner could not find the site. So you couldn't listen to the system. By adding that voice channel into the scanner radio, you could have continued to listen to that trunk radio site when that control channel was using the voice channel. So we fixed it over on Rio Reference by marking that voice channel a possible control channel. But again, this is a good example as to why you want to program in all the channels, whether it be control or voice. Because if that voice frequency ever becomes a control frequency, you're already set up. And again, like we said before, these radios these days have a ton of memory in them because a lot of them run off of a SD card. Why not, right? Why not put all these voice channels in? And even the newer radios, like the P2 series of scanner radios, they have like 9,000 memory locations. You should have plenty of room to put control and voice into each site and system. So there we go with setting up a LCN system and a control channel only system. But there's another twist here that we're going to save for another day and that's rebanding. We're going to set up a separate Scanner Radio University podcast episode just for rebanding, which is now at this point almost a thing of the past because a lot of P25 systems already know how to handle this. But if we still have a EDAC system or a Type 2 system out there that's in a rebanded environment, it's good to know how to set those up as well. So we're going to get that to you and we're going to make that its own podcast episode because we want to deliver these Scanner Radio University videos and podcast episodes in bite-sized chunks so you can listen to them or watch them, digest the content without getting overwhelmed. So again, today we've talked about two different kinds of trunk radio systems. Those that require logical channel numbering and those that require just control channel only. We've talked about the pros and the cons of each and how we set them up to maximize our effectiveness when it comes to scanning these systems. So as always, please make sure you subscribe to this podcast in your favorite Audible podcast player or over on YouTube because we're going to continue with the Scanner Radio University series. And again, if you like these or have ideas for upcoming Scanner Radio University videos and podcasts, leave them down in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. And we'll catch you all again very soon. My name is Phil Lichtenberger, and this again is Scanner School, where we teach you everything you want to know about the scanner radio hobby. 73.